Hello there, my friends. This is John Henry Sheridan, your fellow human being on this journey during this particularly unique time that we're all going through, 2020. Um, so, um, welcome to my Thoughtful Pause series. Tonight, I would like to discuss something that's been on my mind for a while. And this is something that it's kind of been hard to talk about. There's a lot of things that are hard to talk about nowadays. Um, and I'll get to that um, perhaps later. But um, anyway, uh, I'm going to avoid using the word versus because versus sounds competitive. It's not what I want to promote. So the title is ownership or stewardship ownership or stewardship so what what's this about so this is not me saying I don't like capitalism I'm not speaking pro-communism it's just it's beyond that altogether really uh, and for anyone who watches these videos, thank you for having an open mind to have a thoughtful pause. Just pause and say, well, what does this guy have to say? And to consider it, and that's that. I'm not forcing anything on you. I'm not trying to make you believe the way I believe. I'm just sharing something that maybe you haven't thought about before. Or maybe you have thought about, and this is maybe nice to get a, a confirmation that oh wow other people are thinking this too so here's you know throughout my life when I come across the concept of ownership in a way that locks me out it's bothersome and I think that it contributes to certain crimes, certain level of disrespect, when people feel that they can't access a certain degree of ownership in their life. So, what do I mean? Uh, for example, you go into nature trails throughout the country and then you see signs that are said, private property, no trespassing, or Trespassers will be fined or maybe will be shot, <laughs> depending where you are. Things like that. That never, I didn't like, never like that. Now, I understand why sometimes you need strict language to keep people away. You know, you want to scare people from messing around and polluting or disrespecting your property. I understand that. But there's something about that whole thing about scaring people away and threatening people to stay away from property that uh, doesn't sit well with me. Um, I'm, it doesn't, I'm not mad at the people who do that. I just wish that we could be mature enough to not have to do that as a, as a species. So... Ownership, to me, can get confuddled with this idea that I own it, it's mine, so I could do whatever I want with it. It being whatever, let's say a piece of land, right? Let's say I own it, it's mine, so if I want to uh, burn poisonous fires on my, on my land all the time, that's up to me. I don't agree with that, right? Or... Um, I own it. It's mine. I could do whatever I want with it. You know, whether it's books or a, or a musical instrument or a home. Now, I understand how we got to this paradigm as a species. It, this, it does make sense to me. But what I'd like to suggest is rather than an ownership model, what if we 
all began to adopt the stewardship model, which is very similar, but has some significant uh, differences. So a stewardship model could be more along the lines of, I'm responsible for this at this time. It's in my, it falls in my responsibility or it's under my jurisdiction. So it's kind of like it's mine. Um, but I know it's not mine. Let's say a house, for example. A house I live in, I could call it's mine if, if, it, if I own the deed or something, right? And that, and I could believe that it's mine. But of course I know I will die and more than likely the house will outlive me. So what did it mean to say it was mine? If not, to say that it fell under my jurisdiction for a while, I was the steward of the house, um, and then that I kept it in good shape so that the next owner can inherit or whatever the word is, can uh, receive a house that's uh, well-maintained and then hopefully continue to maintain it in that spirit for the next owner. And this is not just about a house. This is about a car, a bicycle, uh, music, um, gardens, anything that can be owned. Uh, because the ownership model, I just, I'm sorry, it, it uh, It does seem to be, uh, basically it seems to be a delusion because I know people die, right? My father had a big comic book collection. Beautiful, amazing comic book collection. I don't speak about that often. He did. And he died young. So are those his comics? Yes. But what does that mean? If, if someone like me or his, the people he left behind in his family don't honor, cherish, and respect it, it kind of means nothing because then they'll just fall, they'll just sort of fade away with piles of dust on them. So him being the owner, what does that mean? So anyway, um, rather to think that even if I buy something myself, that I'm the steward of it. So this way I treat it with respect. Now, I, I, part of this came to me because I recently rented a car and went on a trip, a uh, family trip. And I found myself, when I got back home from the trip, I cleaned the car really well before returning it. Part of it is, yes, I was afraid of any repercussions, so I wanted to make sure that it was uh, really in tip-top shape uh, so I didn't get in trouble or any fines or anything. I didn't do anything wrong to it that I, I could think of. But um, And also, I wanted the next person to receive it to get a car in, in really good condition, or at least as good, if not better, than I received it. Why? Because I'm going to be that person receiving the next car I rent or the next Airbnb place I stay at. I try to leave things as nice as I can because the next person is going to receive it. And I love receiving things in good condition. But this is life. You know, life is passing things along. We don't, even if we, you live 100 years and you have something from 10 years old to 100 it's only 90 years of quote unquote ownership. And what, let's say it's a diamond ring. You're going to hold on to that diamond ring every day of your life. What is that? What is that? How could that mean anything? I don't know. Maybe some people have meaning with that, but still, you walk in down the street, the diamond ring, you're looking at it, it slips out of your hands, falls into a sewer. <clears throat> Very good chance you're not going to get it back. So then. Do you still own it? You know? So 
rather than thinking that I'm the steward of it, I took care of it while it was mine. When it was time for us to part, this diamond ring and I, the universe deemed it was time for us to part. We parted and now I let it go. And it's on to its next mission, owner, its next phase, and I'm on to my next phase. I just put that out there for you to consider. Rather than ownership, and I know we still own things. That's the paradigm we're still living in, but to consider rather than I'm owning it, I'm, I'm, take, I'm responsible to take care of it for now. And the same thing with our body, which I maybe do another video on that, that our body is really on loan to us from the universe. Because... You know, we received it. We got to give it back. So if we thought about it, anyway, you could agree or disagree with that. It doesn't matter. But if you thought about it like that, like how come I clean the car so well, but when I borrow my mother's car, I clean the rental car so well. But when I borrow my mother's car on a regular basis, I don't return to her super clean every time. It's in good condition. I take care of it, but I don't go that extra mile like I did for the rental car because maybe I don't sense that I'm uh, a steward as much. It feels a little bit more like co-ownership. Or let's say if it was my car, I wouldn't clean it out like that much, you know. Um, but why not? So the same thing for my body, you know. If I was uh, borrowing someone else's body. I would try to take care of it so I didn't give it back in more shape. So since I have my own body, I'm the owner or the steward of it for now, I might as well treat it like with the utmost respect as if I'm renting it and I got to give it back. Uh, because I'm not taking it with me when I die and I cross over to, to the next uh, existence. This stays here. So um, I might as well treat it with the utmost respect because I do have to return it, you know. It's just it's something that's just been on my mind for a while recently. And it's with everything. A house, if you have a house or a car, guitars. The guitars, you know, I've had several guitars. They've passed through my hands, went on to other people. I've received other people's guitars. Guitars are a very personal thing. But... <clears throat> I never really owned any because it doesn't end with me. You know, most guitars will hopefully outlive me because they're made of materials that can do that. Um, and maybe a guitar is not meant to be had by the same owner forever, you know. And sometimes, you know, if you guys are meant to be together, yourself and your guitar or, or person or whatever, the universe will bring you back together. I've had guitars leave me and then come back to me, and then leave me again, and maybe they'll come back again. I, but to say that I own it, even my music, I never felt like I really owned my music. Even if I copyrighted it and did whatever you need to do to protect it. Because I don't even feel, I don't feel like it comes from me I feel like I'm more of a channel or a conduit to allow it through. So I, I, I do earn some sort of degree of respect for taking the time to allow it to come through and refine it and go through the process. I, as in any songwriter or composer who allows creative art through, we deserve that respect. But do we really own it? I know maybe some people don't like that question. Just something to think about. It does, you know, there's this uh, channel, uh, this person who channels an entity, his name is Bashar. And he says the aliens or the, the ra alien race that he speaks from, they have a definition of abundance, which is very unique, and I'd like to share it, which is um, abundance, according to their definition, <clears throat> this these uh, so higher, more highly evolved beings or beings from another um, 
reality, dimension, planet, whatever you, whatever have you. Abundance is the ability to do what you need to do or do what you want to do when you want to do it. Abundance is the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. Um, probably he said need, not want. But, but abundance is the ability to do what you need to do when you need to do it. So if, if I want to make a video and I have a camera and I have the time and I have light and I have something to talk about and an internet connection to, to hook it up, that's abundant. You know, it's, it's, it's not about stockpiling things that you use someday, one day, but it's about trusting that the universe will align you with what resources and materials you need at any given moment to accomplish what you need to do. And if you do not have those materials or resources to trust that they will manifest or to reevaluate and say, is this really what I need to be doing right now? Can I use the abundance of the universe that's in front of me? Can I recognize it and use that rather than long for something that's not present? <clears throat> anyway, getting a little out of my league. I'm just having fun here, guys. Uh, I enjoy these talks. My eyes are tired. It's getting late. Got to post this. So thank you for listening. Ownership or stewardship? You don't have to choose, but could you... Just think about it a little bit. Anyway, uh, I'd love to hear from you, but let's keep this light. Let's keep it positive. No arguments. We are just jiving off one another's ideas, man. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, have a great night. Until next time. See you later. Take care of yourself. Keep smiling.